get all these. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm going to be cooking something that I've been wanting to cook for a long, long time, and I finally have the opportunity to do it. These came straight out of the woods. These are elk steaks, and we're going to cook them today. Now, before you think that I'm a great hunter, I did not actually go hunting for this elk. I hunted and failed, but I had a great time. I think somebody took some pity on me and gave me some elk backstrap, which is, from what I'm told at least, because I haven't really eaten elk before, the prime thing to eat on any kind of deer or elk. Now, from my research online, I understand at least that the backstrap is what would be like a ribeye steak. Now, some places will say it's like the filet mignon. Some people say it's like the prime rib. Some say it's like the sirloin. Some say it's like the porterhouse. I don't know. All I know is that I'm going to cook this like a steak. I'm going to eat it, and I suspect that I'm going to enjoy the heck out of it. So the plan for today is really simple. We're going to go just salt and pepper because more so than any other kind of cut with steaks, and especially elk steaks, you want to taste the meat underneath. So I don't want to cover it up with a bunch of different spices and some kind of crazy rub. So only 50-50 salt and pepper, and then... When it's out there, I'm going to use butter to baste it because game meat, especially elk, is extremely lean and I do not want this to dry out. Okay, we're out at the PK Grill right now. It has weathered a lot of abuse traveling with me, but this thing is one of my favorite grills. I have cast iron because my focus is getting a great sear, getting that great crust and all that flavor on the exterior surface of the meat. Now, what I want to be sure of is that this cast iron is hot. So I'm gonna use my Thermopen IR. I'm gonna use the infrared to see what temperature the cast iron is. All right, it says 548. I think that's hot enough to cook. So I'm gonna spray it with some canola oil really quickly just so that the steak doesn't stick to the cast iron and then get that sear on either side and then once the sear is in place i'm going to add butter and just baste it and make sure everything stays nice and moist until it comes to a medium rare Now, one of the reasons you want to have the pan screaming hot when you put that meat in is because when you make contact with the pan, you're putting that meat inside, it's going to absorb lots of the heat. So the temperature of the pan is going to drop right after you put the meat in. So if we check the temperature of the pan right now, we're down to 402 degrees. So it's already dropped quite a bit. And so we want to keep a lot of heat in the pan before we put the steak in so that we get a good sear and it doesn't just kind of boil the steak. If you've ever had a steak that's not been seared properly, it doesn't produce the same flavor. So extremely hot pan is extremely important. All right, we got the sear that we want. So I'm gonna pull this off the heat. So. I'm going to take it over here. The pan is still hot. It's going to finish cooking there. At this point, I'm adding the butter, and then I'm going to spoon it on top of the steak, keep everything nice and moist. Okay, so with a nice sear, we've got some butter on these. These should be really good. Got to let them rest though. So I'm going to take them inside, wait about 10 minutes, and then we're going to slice it up and see how it tastes. All right, I cannot wait. We have let these things rest for 15 minutes, and now it is time to cut them open and give them a taste. It's a different flavor than beef, but it's got the kind of same texture as beef. It's so good. Mm. So the flavor of that is so good. I don't taste any kind of weird gaminess that I've been told about. It's phenomenal. It tastes kind of like beef, but you can definitely tell it's different. It's got a, a different texture. So this, rather than being like the texture of, you know, beef ribeye, is more of like beef New York strip, but still 
amazingly delicious. The beauty of these steaks is that you can have something that's got the richness and the kind of flavor level of beef, but it's not super fatty. So if you want something that's lean, you can eat these. You don't have to force chicken down your throat. Now I have a lot of plans for other kinds of cuts from elk and from wild game that I plan to slow smoke and turn into delicious, succulent, juicy stuff. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for me. Now this is wonderful, but I wanna see what I can do with those big cuts smoked for a long time. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and then leave me a comment of other kinds of videos you'd like to see. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MadScientistBarbecue. I'll see you guys next time.